What's going on guys? So I bought another console from GameStop and this time it's a refurbished Nintendo 3DS XL and it's not just any old 3DS XL, it's actually the special NES edition. So it looks like a, you know, an old NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System from uh, Nintendo. And yeah, so basically in this video, I'm gonna open it up, uh, take a look at it, make sure they actually send me the right thing, make sure it works and just kind of check out the condition and um, you know, see if it's worth it uh, buying a 3DS XL from GameStop. And before we get into this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already. And if you want to support the channel even more, go ahead and hit the join button and join my channel membership or hit my Patreon link and join there as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and open this thing up. So let me grab my knife real quick. And it's a pretty straightforward box. I, I ripped off the label, the shipping label and stuff, but small box. Um, got your battery warning. A lot of times the GameStop boxes come and they're destroyed, which to be honest can be attributed somewhat to GameStop and also somewhat to uh, the shipping carrier. Um, but you know, this one is in good condition so far, so that's good. And I paid, I think, what am I doing? Can't even open a box, right? Um, I think I paid $140 for this thing, which is, uh, to be honest, I haven't looked at 3DS XL prices in a while, so I'm not sure if that's a great price or not. And as you can see here, this is a packing label and it says 3DS XL system NES edition, uh, 125 plus tax handling ends up at just about 140, um, which seems a little bit steep for a console this old, but um, I imagine a limited edition console like this is F140 is probably actually a decent price. Let me look and look at that. They actually put a lot of those in there. Usually GameStop puts a few of them in there and just tosses, tosses the box in there, but somebody handled that one with care. And here is your um, Nintendo 3DS XL and they actually call it recharged. I remember Nintendo calling refurbished stuff recharged in the past, but I don't think I've ever actually seen a recharged box, at least not in a few years. So I don't know if this is a really old box or, or what's going on, or maybe they call, do still call recharged. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but as you can see, premium refurbished Nintendo 3DS XL, and it has the, the 3DS XL along with the system, the battery, AC adapter, and stylus. On the other side, it just says more details, which is NES gray. And you can kind of hear it sliding around the box, which is not always a great sign. It might just be the stylus, or uh, it might just be one of the accessories sliding around. Hopefully it's not actually the console that's sliding around like that, but I guess we'll see in a minute. <laughs> Man, either this stuff is still really good or my knife is trash. I think my knife is trash. All right, so it opens up nice and easy like this, and let's get the big reveal right here. And there it is. So, yeah, it definitely wasn't the console sliding around because they, I do recall Nintendo using this in the past. I think I got another, another portable console from Nintendo and they use this like, not really shrink wrap, but they wrap it in a way that it holds down the console, which is not a bad solution to be honest. Let's go ahead and pull this thing out. And yeah, this is what, so this is what was in rolling around down there was the power cord. And it actually included this little instruction manual thing. It says your premium refurbished handheld unit may need a new screen calibration prior to play. If touch functions are not operating properly, then follow these simple instructions to get back in the game. So it basically tells you how to calibrate your touch screen. I'm sure GameStop has had a lot of returns of people saying their touch screen doesn't work and calibration is probably the only issue. Um, so I'll keep that in mind. And here's the console. So at first glance, that's a pretty, it's a pretty sweet looking console. I mean, I've never actually seen one of these um, NES 3DS XLs in person. It's a pretty nice looking console. It's kind of like a, got like a silver base and then the top looks like the controller. And then on the bottom, um, which is kind of like a gray metallic kind of color, nothing special there. And this console does appear to have a lot of scratches and stuff. It's not like in super duper great condition. Um, it's not bad, it's kind of the, I guess the color scheme of it makes it hard to look really bad. Like it's not glossy and stuff, so it, it doesn't look bad probably on camera, but if you look at, look at it in the correct light, you can see that there's, there's a lot of little small scratches. Um, but nothing too crazy. There's a little bundle of scratches right there. And on the back, there's some scratches, but the back, you always expect there to be scratches on the back, so that's not too concerning. And then on the top, you got your left and right triggers, which seem to work fine. You got your game slot here, your charging ports. Um, I guess that's some sort of sensor, not really sure. And then on the bottom, uh, it's just where you open the console up. Nothing crazy there. You got your headphone jack, I guess. And then on this side, you got your stylus. And as you can see, it's a little black stylus. Nothing special there. Um, yeah, nothing else crazy. You got your volume over here. Let's go ahead and flip this thing open and see what we got inside. So they do at least include some screen protection, which is nice. 
and as you can see, you got your double screen, and the screens actually look pretty good at first glance. I'm not seeing like any crazy scratches or anything. Um, let me try to shine it in the light a little bit. If you look at that top screen, there's like a smudge right here from like a finger, but I really don't see any major scratches. There's something going on in the top right hand corner, but I, it's not a scratch. I'm not sure what that is. Now on the bottom screen, I'm also not seeing anything on the bottom screen either, and that's a touch screen. That's where you usually expect scratches to be, but nothing bad there, so that's good. You got your 3D on and off. That little slider works fine. Um, your volume works fine. And I'm saying these work fine just because they slide, but I'm not, you know, I'll have to turn it on and make sure it actually works. So here's the power button. Let's go ahead and see if this thing boots up. Maybe. There we go. All right, I was, <laughs> I was a tad bit worried there because it took a while for it to boot up. So I'm just gonna focus on the bottom screen for now. So we got English. Let's just use the, the stylus just cause. I'm a little concerned here. It says to do a 3D screen check. It says check that the 3D depth slider to the right of the upper screen is all the way up. Okay, it's all the way up. Now we'll tap next, I guess. And then, of course, position it, blah, blah, blah. Sure, let me position it 3 to 16 inches which way. Upper screen can display images in 3D. Yep, let's go ahead and activate it. Although it already looks like it's activated. That's why I'm a little bit concerned. Never mind, I can really see it now. Hurts my eyes, though. <laughs> See, if I have a 3DS XL and I'm playing it all the time, I'm definitely going to turn the 3D off. It just hurts my eyes a little bit. Okay, so it says blah, blah, blah. Select your date and time. 2017, sure, why not? 10 o'clock, sure, why not? Not accurate, but we'll go with it. And then next, next, next. We'll go classic QWERTY right here. My birthday is January 1st, sure, why not? Yeah, we live in Anguilla. I don't know if I pronounced that right. The top screen just looks a little odd. I guess that might just be how the 3DS is. It, it's probably because I have so many lights shining on it, to be honest. Um, it just looks like a little off. I'm not sure how to describe it. I don't know if you guys can see that in the screen, in the, in the, uh, the camera or not. Um, probably not, but you know. I think it's just because of the lights shining in it. Uh, we'll do the internet connection later. Uh, I do not want to set up parental controls. So as you can see, guys can see there's a 3D slider on the side. And I had it all the way down, but or I guess not quite all the way down. You kind of have to click it into place to be all the way down. That looks a little bit better now. Um, yeah, that looks a little bit better now. Let's see if we can go ahead and turn the screen brightness up to start with. If I can figure that out. There we go. All right, it's already off <laughs> all the way, so it doesn't get any brighter than that. So hopefully you guys can see it well. But at, here it is. I mean, you got your two screens. Um, now the top screen is a little bit larger than the bottom screen. I guess this is like the top screen is where your main gameplay should happen. Your bottom screen is where you know all of your touch action and second screen action will happen. But let's kind of just take a look at this thing and make sure it works properly the way we want it to. So kind of like any other Nintendo, uh, you know, console in this era era they have these little you know apps down at the bottom so we have health and safety information you got a 3ds camera sound a me maker classic me maker me plaza got the eShop, ar games face raiders i don't know whose face that is activity log nintendo zone viewer download play system settings so it's super similar to like the wii u um, i actually just did a video on the wii u recently but uh yeah pretty similar setup now the cool thing about the DS is the download play. I haven't done download play in ages, but I did it on the original Nintendo DS a lot with some friends. Um, so you got notifications tab here. Nothing crazy. It does load pretty fast, which is good. So you got game notes, friend list, internet browser, Miiverse. I'm interested to see what game notes is. I never heard of that. I'm sure you can probably just like draw random stuff. And apparently we are preparing something. Yeah, you can just draw stuff. I guess you could take notes if you want to really study up on your, your gaming and remember how to beat Bowser, stuff like that. I don't know. All right, so let's check out some stuff on here. So, so far it seems to be working fine. I mean, like, 
the touchscreen works fine. It's not, it doesn't need a calibration or anything. Uh, the A button works fine. I can't really text out, I guess Y works. Because you can tell it's trying to, it pulls up that when you do the Y. Everything else clicks fine. L and R work because they activated the camera. And then let's go back to the main screen. It is a pretty good looking console though. I mean, uh, I guess it could be, uh, to be honest, I think it could be a little bit more in depth. I mean, pretty much the only special thing about this console is the front has the NES controller. I kind of wish they did something with the back. Um, I'm not sure what, but maybe just the back of the back of the controller or maybe something to do with the console. I'm not sure, but I feel like they could have done a little bit more with this. It's a special edition, but really the only thing special about it is this little controller emblem on the front, which to be honest, you could probably, I'm sure you can buy a skin that looks like this and put it on the front. Um, so while it, it is a nice special edition or limited edition, it's nothing, nothing crazy special. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. So system settings, you can actually change the theme. Apparently not because you don't have an SD card in here. All right. <laughs> I guess there's not enough storage on the console itself. That's that's interesting. So you can use Amiibos on here. Got your system settings. Let's see what we can get work up here. So on system settings, you got all the normal stuff: internet settings, parental controls, other settings, data management, touchscreen. So here, I think this is where you can calibrate your touchscreen. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it right now because it seems to be working fine. 3D screen check, sound, mic test outer camera, circle pad. So it's nice that you can at least check up on everything and kind of do some maintenance in case something's not working instead of just immediately sending it back to Nintendo because your touchscreen is not calibrated. But yeah, let's go ahead and let's try a game out. I think I have one 3DS game. So let's put it in and, and make sure it works. All right, guys, so I've got Animal Crossing here, uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf for the 3DS, which I have not played in a long time, but like any Animal Crossing game, they're all pretty fun. So as you can see, you can stick it in the back slot, and it should load up now. Well, that's not a good sign. It says there is nothing inserted in the game slot. All right, let's try this again. Let's put it in the game slot. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, that's not good. Try this one more time. So, I mean, this this game, I just pulled it out of its case. Like, I've barely ever played this game. I don't, like, leave it laying around or anything. The contacts look fine. I'm not sure if you can... Let's see, let's try to focus on it. Yeah, you can see the contacts look fine. They're not dirty at all. I don't know if I can really show the inside of the game slot on camera very well. I can't really see it myself very well, but... I'm not quite sure what's going on, guys. Um... Let me try rebooting. So I booted back up and it is showing up now. I'm not sure why it did that because I'm pretty sure with the 3DS you can unplug and plug back in games whenever you want to and they should work. I don't think you should have to reboot, but I don't know. It works fine now. I just, see I ejected it and put it back in and now it's working fine now. That was, that was interesting. I'm not sure why the console did that, but uh, it's working now, so that's a good thing. So you need to, what did it say? You need to update this software before you can launch it. All right, well, I guess that, I guess that means I have to connect to the internet. So let me go ahead and connect to the internet real quick. All right, guys, so I got connected to my internet, my internet router now. Uh, so let's go back and see if we can boot up Animal Crossing New Leaf now. Hope it works. We've had a couple scares. <laughs> I, I still think it's just odd that it, it wouldn't boot up, but you know, it's like the classic classic thing where uh, you reboot and it starts working. I mean, that's it's that way with a lot of electronics. So now it says I need to update the software again. How do I update the software, though? It just says update the software, but it doesn't actually tell me how. Maybe it means the, the console software? I'm not sure. Or maybe my internet connection is not working, but it did an internet test and said it was working. All right, it's updating now. Yeah, so I guess we'll see. Hopefully this fixes it. I'm not sure, though. So we're updated now. It looks like it's restarting. Hopefully we can play Animal Crossing New Leaf now. I just think it's odd that it'll come up with that pop-up and not tell us how to fix it. Still doing it. There we go. Finally. 
so it appears that I think that was the issue. Um, I had updated the system software and then I tried to boot it back up again. What the heck? Oh, you know what? I think I messed up when I, when I was going through that setup mode and I just clicked a random country. I think I messed myself up. So let me go ahead and back and go back and set that to United States real quick. All right guys, so I have an SD card and I'm not sure if I'm gonna show all the previous stuff I just did, but just in case I don't show it in the video, let me give you a summary of what just happened. So basically, I was trying to play Animal Crossing New Leaf on the 3DS and it was giving me fits. It, like was, it was telling me I needed to update, but it wouldn't give me an option to update. And I eventually figured out that I needed to switch uh, countries. So when I first booted this up, I put it on Anguilla just because I was trying to speed through the process. Uh, but I actually needed to change it back to the U.S. So I changed it back to the U.S., then tried to boot up the game again, and it was still giving me the issue. Um, I looked online. I said, go to the eShop. So I went to the eShop. <laughs> the eShop took like five minutes to load. And once it finally loaded, it told me there was like an error because I had switched countries. So I confirmed that I switched countries, and then it was letting me boot up and update the software. But then when I tried to update the software, it told me I needed an SD card. So <laughs> let's try this one more time, guys. I'm going to put the SD card in the slot. I just found a random SD card I have that's actually brand new. Um, I have way too many SD cards. Put the game in. And I'm really hoping it works now. There we go. So it's creating, it just created something on the SD card. If we boot up now, it gives us an update. And we can click download now. It'll take some time to complete. And it says, do not turn off the system or remove the SD card. Um, there it goes. So we're finally getting a blue updating bar. I think it is finally download, downloading the software to the SD card. Finally. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> just the process you had to go through to do this. Not easy. It's not, it's not straightforward. It doesn't like tell you anything. I, I guess it would have helped if I put the right country in at first, but still, just odd. Um, and the thing is, I've, I've played a 3DS XL before in the past, and I don't think I had to... Uh, had to put an SD card in to play Animal Crossing New Leaf. But I guess maybe the difference is this is just a regular 3DS XL. The other one I played was a new 3DS XL. So that's probably the difference. Some, I guess the new 3DS XL probably has some built-in memory, whereas this one, I guess, does not have built-in memory. All right, guys, so apparently it finally finished downloading. It took like 15 minutes, which is really a long time for a 3DS update. I don't know if it's just the... I don't know. I don't know why it took so long. I don't know if... Because my internet is not slow. I don't know if it's just the a 3DS thing. I guess that's what it is. But it looks like it is finally booting up so we can test an actual 3DS game. And so far it looks like it's working. So we got the 3DS working. It's playing a game now. Um, I personally own my own 2DS and I never had to do any kind of updates and stuff like this. Although I haven't played my 2DS in like two years. So that's another odd thing. I forgot that, that uh, these cartridges store their data on the cartridge. So it still has my... Um, my actual save data uh, saved from when I played um, on the 2DS a couple years ago, but it had to download the update data to SD card. Just, just interesting stuff. I mean, it's finally working. That's a good thing. Uh, so as we saw, saw this console seems to be working fine. I mean, all the buttons are working. Uh, the game's working. We tried a 3DS game. Also tried a 2D or just regular DS game, and it worked as well. All the settings are working. The 3D is working. Although I'm personally not a huge fan of 3D, just because it kind of hurts my eyes. Um, the, I guess the main attraction to this console is, you know, obviously the NES in the front. And while I think it's a cool console, you know, if, you know, I'm not sure what these things go for on eBay. I would assume that these go for more than just a regular um, 3DS XL. Uh, but it was 140 bucks from GameStop, which, to be honest, for a limited edition console is not terrible. Um, but I, I don't think it's the best limited edition console out there for the 3DS. Um, if you're getting the 3DS at this point, you might as well just get the new, the new 3DS XL instead of just the old 3DS XL. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a cool limited edition, but I don't think it's crazy cool or anything. It's just got the, got the NES controller on the front, and that's about it. The rest of it's just silver on the front, and then kind of like a metallic grayish kind of color on the back. I'm not sure what you call that. Um, but nonetheless, it is a cool console. I'm not sure I'd pay $140 for it, or I recommend you guys pay $140 for it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it came in good condition for the most part. Got some scratches on it, but not too bad. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit the join button if you want to join my channel membership, or hit my Patreon link if you want to be a patron. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.